so we've known for a very long time that uh, uh, EBV uh, causes lymphoma, uh, particularly B-cell lymphoma, in immunocompromised patients. Um, what uh, it has been, you know, less uh, sort of clear, certainly from the standpoint of uh, mechanistically, is how uh, EBV uh, causes uh, or contributes to lymphoma in patients with, uh, who are immunocompetent. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the one thing we know for sure is that there is a subset of uh, patients with lymphoma, for example, Hodgkin's lymphoma, DLBCL, peripheral tissue lymphomas, that uh, uh, have EBV, um, including EBV in the tumor cells. Um, and uh, we don't know what causes uh, some patients to have EBV-associated uh, lymphoma versus non-EBV-associated lymphoma. What we know is that uh, the, uh, the ability, the, the presence of the virus um, actually provides a vulnerability that can be a leverage uh, to target lymphomas, particularly because these lymphomas are EBV-associated, actually um, have a worse prognosis uh, in, in several different subtypes of, of lymphoma. So I think that uh, this really is the, one of the first uh, opportunities to leverage the presence of the virus as a therapeutic uh, angle uh, in, uh, in patients who have high risk, uh, high risk EBV positive associated lymphomas. All prior uh, attempts have been focusing particularly on immunology and in immune responses. So with uh, either with CTLs more recently with uh, CAR-T. Um, but those are, you know, complicated therapies that logistically are very difficult to implement and they're not, uh, you know, it, it's very hard to do them um, globally. Um, our is uh, oral therapy that can really be done anywhere, you know, including in underdeveloped countries where EBV lymphoma is a particularly uh, pr problematic.